So we're back on track in our Gospel of uh, Mark series. Last week, if you were here, we had just a great time uh, with Vacation Bible School celebration. The kids and the youth up here, da- and some adults up here dancing uh, before, uh, during all the songs and everything, and the great fellowship that we had after the fact in the fellowship in, in Wesley Hall and. You know, got got a nice pie in my face with a nice little slice of banana, which I still don't understand why they put a banana on the on the pie for us. But it it, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and just all of the memories of past vacation Bible schools just just comes flush rushing back, and it's a reminder for me of not where we have been, but also where we're going. How how God is continuing to guide us and to lead us and, and shape us. That's why we have the, the Awaken Life uh, course that we're doing in between services. That's why we're working on a new mission vision strategy just so that we can continue to realize that, that we are not stuck here. We are called to be a forward moving, a forward thinking church to allow God's grace to, to guide us as we move forward. So we're looking forward to all of that. but. There's one thing that we also have to realize is that we are also called to stop. Scripture has a specific word for stopping, and it's called Sabbath. Sabbath is one of those words that I think we have, we have a difficulty wrestling with what exactly we do with Sabbath. I, and I will admit to you right now that I struggle with Sabbath. That's something that I have a, a hard time fully grasping and fully understanding. I, I read books and, and I read scripture and I'm just like, come on, just tell me what I need to do. How do I practice Sabbath? Just, just give me, give me a, a five-point bullet list of those things that I need to do so that I can make sure that I'm practicing Sabbath correctly. But see, that's not what Sabbath is all about. If you're familiar, for those of you who may not understand exactly what Sabbath is, Sabbath comes from the very beginning of scriptures, from from the book of Genesis. You have this opening beautiful poem about the creation of the world, where, where, where God is speaking the world into existence. And at the very end, after, after he forms the land and after he brings in the light and the darkness and the, the plants and the animals, the waters separating, all of those type of things, and after he creates humankind, he, he looks at everything and he says, this is very good. This, this, is, this is like my crown achievement. This is awesome. What, what I have created here is very, very good. And then the very next passages... In in Genesis, we hear that God rested. After after six days of creation, God then stopped, and he rested. And I think that's something that God wanted to set up from the very beginning so that we, too, can, can pick that up and do that ourselves. We are not machines. We break down. We get worn out. We don't function as well as when we have that ability to rest and that ability to stop. And it's so important for us to remember that. And and I think if we look at further in scriptures, we see it as something that they had a hard time understanding as well. So after the creation, we know we, 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 we see the, the creation of, of the people of Israel, and the people of Israel get, get uh, enslaved in Egypt. We won't go through the whole backstory of how that happened, but, but they're enslaved in Egypt, and Pharaoh is making them work. And not just work, I mean, they're putting a heavy, heavy burden upon them to produce bricks and to, to build things and do all of these type of things. And he makes it harder and harder and harder for them to do. And finally, when Moses releases the captives and, and, and takes them into the wilderness, they, they arrive at Mount Sinai where they receive the Ten Commandments. 
And one of the things that I like to do whenever I have my confirmation class is I have them memorize the Ten Commandments. Because it's, it's important for us to, to know those ten specific laws that God has given us. But I will have to admit, and I think they, they would probably really thank me instead of be upset that I'm making them do this, if they realize that I'm not making them memorize the entire Ten Commandments. Because a few of the commandments have a whole lot more uh, commentary, if you will, about what exactly that commandment means. And one of them is about the Sabbath. A and the Sabbath commandment is the longest commandment that we have written in the Ten Commandments. I have it written on the screen here for you. This is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, where God tells Moses to pass on to the people, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your sons or daughters or your male and female servants, nor your animals, nor even foreign residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord's made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh, seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So, so that is the first instance of, of God saying, remember, you need a day of rest. I didn't work around the clock through, throughout the entire seven days. I took the seventh day after I created the world and I rested. So you also need to rest. I think the most important word that we see in this passage is that very first word of the scripture, remember the Sabbath. To, to remember, to understand, to know the reason why that you rest on the seventh day is because I rested. Well, as we move along, the Israelites are wandering around the wilderness. And we see another instance of the Ten Commandments coming up again in, in the book of Leviticus. But I want you to take a look. Uh, God gave a different word when he's talking about this particular uh, 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 commandment again. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 12. It says, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded. What, what's the word change here? What's different? Observe. God isn't saying remember the Sabbath day. He's saying observe the Sabbath day. Now, we really don't have a lot of information exactly why we have this change in text, but this is what I think. I think that the Israelites, as they're wandering around in the wilderness and they're going from place to place, that they were remembering the Sabbath day. Oh, yeah, the Sabbath. Yeah, that's that, that day that we're not supposed to do any work or we're, we're, we're supposed to, to rest. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let me go over here and continue to start building or, or start, start doing tasks and, 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 and doing things. So, so God doesn't say to them again to remember the Sabbath day. He says, observe it. Do it. Make it a part of your everyday ordinary routine. A a and have that be something that you do because you need to rest. Y you need to allow yourself to become whole. Now we're going to fast forward to the Gospel of Mark. Just take a big old giant jump from Leviticus all the way to Mark because Jesus had struggles teaching people about the Sabbath. And one of the group of people that he had problems teaching about the Sabbath was the Pharisees. So our scripture for the day is from Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. I invite you to follow along in your Bible so you can follow along with the words on the screen. Hear the word of the Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. 
And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiphar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. And then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what is going on with this particular text? Why, why is Jesus having this conversation or, or, or disagreement with the Pharisees? I think one of the reasons why they, he's having this disagreement with the Pharisees is because I think when they heard God the second time tell them to observe the Sabbath day, they put it into overdrive. When you take a look at Torah, there, there are 613 laws that, that we find in the first five books of the Bible. Well, the Pharisees, they decided, well, well we need to expound on these laws so that we fully understand what it is. Kind of like that, that five-point checklist that I would wish that I could have to fully understand how it is to, to, to live in the Sabbath myself. But, but what they did, they, they added what was called the Mishnah, which is kind of their, their, their companion to the 613 laws, and they added laws to explain what exactly God was talking about. Now, here is a part about the Sabbath. We have remember the Sabbath day or observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That they created 39 separate categories of what work means. And within those 39 categories, there were many subcategories. So to follow the rule of not working on the Sabbath, there are literally thousands of sub-rules to follow, including how many steps you can take, and how many letters that you can write on the Sabbath. Talking about taking it to the extreme. They, they, they wanted to make sure, well, 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 this is what it means to follow the Sabbath, and, and you can only take a certain amount of steps, and after that, that is considered working. Or, or, or you can only do a certain amount of things. E even there was stuff that were about, about animals falling into pits. Well, you can do this, but you can't do that because then it would be considered working all of these different things that that the, the that the pharisees looked at so it makes sense that when he sees when they see jesus and the disciples picking grains as they are walking along on the sabbath they're going up oh, you're working you can't do that i don't care if you're hungry i don't care if you you need nourishment you are actually doing something that follows along the, the different bylaws that we have on keeping the Sabbath holy. So you need to stop. And Jesus reminded them that, well, they were just taking things a little too far. If we look in Matthew chapter 22, verse, Matthew 23, verse 23, Jesus is sharing these words to the Pharisees. He says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spice, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. So, so, so Jesus is saying, woe to you. you. You have this all wrong. It's not about the amount of stuff that you are doing, but it is about who you are following. And if you are following and living in justice, mercy, and faithfulness to God. If you're practicing all of these, then, the, then Sabbath comes in line. If you're practicing justice, faithfulness, and mercy, then you have a true way into living who you are. See, the fact of the matter is Jesus is giving the disciples and the Pharisees and us these two simple reminders about Sabbath living. The first 
is that the Sabbath is not given to us to make us follow rules, but it is given to us so that we can remember the life we have in God through Jesus Christ. The, the Sabbath isn't making sure that you, you check off things and make sure you're doing things right, but it's about having you stop and to remember your life in Jesus, your life in God. Rabbi Herschel, he said these words, and I thought these were very, very good when we were talking about what the Sabbath is, that the Sabbath is the inspirer. The other days of the week are inspired. Uh, what he means by that is that when we actually take time to stop and rest and, and, and live in this beautiful world that God has given us and we're not doing things, then, then we are inspired. We are inspired by God's goodness. We are inspired by God's mercy. We are inspired by God's grace. We are inspired by God's love. And then the rest of the week we live inspired. And, and we have that opportunity to, to, to let what God has given us, what God has, has built inside of us to go and share God's love with others. So just like other spiritual practice, I think we don't keep the Sabbath to pat ourselves on the back. We use it to remind us that we are human. And that we need to stop and rest. Now, I'll, I'll tell you the, the broken way that I keep the Sabbath. And I say that because I don't have it perfect. But, but one of the things that I, I love to do, I, I keep my Sabbath from Friday night until Saturday night. Because that is the normal pattern of when the Sabbath is kept. Now, we have moved it more to Sundays because we have this natural thing that comes to worship right here. And, and, and believe it or not, I, it, the joke is that, you know, this is the only day that I work. But, you know, it's, it's not. But, uh, but it is a time for you to be refreshed by God's word and to allow that to happen. So, so I like to take my Sabbath on Friday night to Saturday night. And, and some of the things that I like to do is that uh, I'll, I'll ask Tracy, so, so what do you want me to cook? And like this past week, uh, on Friday, we, we got some good old meat from, guess where, Joe's Meat Market. And, and I, I cooked a couple of steaks for us. And uh, Jacob, he got his own stuff since he's home with us now. But I cooked that all for him too. And, and we ate all of that. And then we just kind of relaxed. We watched baseball, which is something we love to do. And, and then we went to bed and we actually slept in. Now, with cats, that means you only sleep until 7 and not, you know, later but, but, but we, we we woke up and then we went on our walk on a saturday morning and then after that we took our kayaks out to uh lake ray hubbard and we kayaked for about three hours and, and enjoyed the beauty of lake ray hubbard and the time that we had together. We even stopped for a little bit, and we uh, still had some snacks left over from the Philippines, and we shared those snacks together as we were out on the water, and then we came back and, you know, got showered and then re rested and relaxed, and, and I, I did some errands that we needed to do and, and took care of that, but I, I didn't, you know, shame myself for doing those type of things because it, it was kind of a relaxing way of doing that. And then when it came about six o'clock, that's when I start to shut down and I start getting my brain ready for everything that I tell you and all the stuff that we do on Sundays. But that was my Sabbath. But I tell you, what, this week since I was preaching on Sabbath, when we were out on the water, I had a more of a view of looking around, enjoying what was around me. We, we found this little outlet a couple of times ago that we went out kayaking. We went out in this kayak, and the, the trees were just absolutely beautiful. We heard animals, uh, birds singing, and we saw different animals here or there. And all of this was just a reminder that God gave us a gorgeous, beautiful creation. And sometimes we just miss it. We miss it because we are so busy 
running around, trying to get everything done, that we fail to realize that God just wants us to stop and enjoy Him. Reminds me of a story I heard from uh, Jan Johnson. Or she was uh, one of her books that she wrote about a uh, Russian peasant that would go into a uh, cathedral uh, every day, and he would sit for for several hours. And the priest started to get worried about this Russian peasant, and he was like, "How how is he making an er- how how is he earning a living? How is he making sure he has stuff to provide for his family?" And one of the days, the priest walked up to the Russian peasant as he was sitting there and says, why are you doing this? You need to be working. You need to be, be, be making yourself productive. And the Russian peasant just says, you know, I come in here because this gives me time to look at God and to have God look at me. And we tell each other we love him. We tell each other we love each other. See, that is what Sabbath is about. It's not about checking off a certain list or anything, but it's to realize that, that, that the Sabbath was made for us so that we could stop and so that we can relax. Finally, it's a reminder that Jesus is Lord even when we are resting and when we find our complete rest in Jesus. In Matthew 28, he says, Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke is another word for a teaching. And what Jesus is saying, take my teaching upon you. And and yes, there will be work that comes with my teaching. But the work that I tell you to do is not going to be a heavy load. It's not going to be a heavy burden because you are connected to me. You are your given your life in and through me. And if you follow my teachings, you will have rest. And sometimes planning a Sabbath takes time. And it takes work in order to plan your Sabbath. You know, one of the things that I like to do on Friday is that I, I like to take care of, like, laundry and little errands and everything that I know would, would creep into Tracy and I's Sabbath time together. I, I do all of that during the week, and there's other things that Tracy and I do during the week. That way, when Saturday comes, we don't have to do anything besides just enjoy the day. And there are days we do it, and there are days that we fail, and, and we end up having to do stuff. But that's okay, because it is not about the task. It is about the relationship and knowing that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Whether I'm working or whether I'm resting, but when I have the opportunity to rest, when I have the opportunity to allow God to work into my life, then I feel the power of Christ within me. So as I said, I'm not going to give you a list of what you can do. What I will give you is a way to think about how to live the Sabbath. And I have them written here on the screen, but uh, if you're on Facebook and if you're on, uh, well, yeah, Facebook, uh, it'll pop up about 1230 today because I scheduled it to to go out. But here is where you can look at following the Sabbath. What about my regular routine, what I need to stop to experience the Sabbath? What is it that I need to do for my regular routine that I would need to do to make sure that I observe Sabbath? Like I said, for me and for Tracy, we make sure we have all of those little to-do lists and tasks that we try to do uh, during the week. That way we can stop during the Sabbath. And then here's the fun part. What's restful for you? What, what, what is it that gives you rest? What brings you an easy delight? What, what, what makes you happy? What is a worshipful way that I connect to God? 
See, see, these are ways that you can begin your practice of Sabbath. Not to make yourself feel guilty if you, you miss it or if you, you fail to do so, but remembering that if you take the opportunity to stop and look at God, God is looking at you. And through Sabbath rest, you are able to say, God, I love you. And you're able to hear from him how much he loves you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for Sabbath. And Lord, sometimes in our world today, it's hard to figure out when it is that we need to practice Sabbath or, or, or when it is that we can take a day off. It, it may not be on a Sunday. That's okay. It, it, it may not be a normal way that we can uh, do it where we, where we take a full time off. It is a reminder, God, that you have called us to rest because you have rested. That you have given us examples of, of how it is to, to take a day and to, to say, God, I just lay it in your hands. Strengthen me. Give me your rest. Even when I'm weary and burdened, even when I may be downtrodden or worried, when we take the opportunity to allow you to, to move in our lives, we are strengthened through the inspiration that you give us to live an inspired life in and through Jesus Christ. And we pray this in the name of the one who loves us and cares for us, Jesus our Lord. Amen.